Coming up on Hands on Android, have you ever run out of internal storage on your device? You want to reclaim a little bit of it? Well, we have a question from a fan of the show, and we're going to dive into some ways that you can find some extra storage on your device next. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remote. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Android is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Protect your online privacy with one click. For three extra months free with a one-year package, go to expressvpn.com slash HOA. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hands on Android. I'm Jason Howell. So at the end of every show, I ask you to email me your questions, your tips, tricks, whatever you have, HOA at twit.tv. And I get a decent amount of emails from time to time. I look through those and see if I can find one that will work on the show. And this is one of those weeks. Got an email from Anthony, who actually has an LG Stylo 5 on Boost Mobile. Anthony says his device has 32 gigs of internal storage. His system files actually take up 15 gigs of that storage, so uh, you know, right around half. App storage, another 10 gigabytes, which leaves him with not much left for everything else. Anthony actually also added a 128 gig SD card. This is a phone that allows you to add an SD card for additional storage. He had hoped to move everything over onto the SD card, which is an assumption that a lot of people make, myself included. I've definitely been there. But alas, the LG Stylo 5 does not easily allow for that. I found so many complaints online uh, from people in a similar position. Uh, there's just a lack of support as far as this is concerned. Anthony says, I've already uninstalled several apps, deleted photos, videos, and made sure that the photos or videos that I take are saved to my SD card. That's an important one right there. My phone is clearly running slower. I'm not getting timely updates on my emails because there isn't enough available space to update my mailbox. Are there any suggestions you can make to help me? Well, I'm going to try anyways. First, I thought I'd start with a little bit of background. What you're looking for is a feature that Android has had since Android 6.0 Marshmallow. It's a feature called adoptable storage. Now, what is that? Adoptable storage allows you to take a micro SD card slot or a movable media and insert it into a device that supports it and then format it so that it's actually seen as internal storage. So it's almost like merged, but based on the, the file structure anyways, it's, it's kind of merged with the internal storage. So in this case, you know, that would that would boost you another 128 gigs and the phone would see it as internal storage. That would be amazing, right? As one example, the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra that I have has an SD card, but it doesn't seem to show this by default. Now, I can go into developer options and activate a feature called force allow apps on external. And once I've done that, if I then go into the settings of a third party app on the device, in this case, I'm gonna show uh, auto dark theme as the example. When I go into settings there and then go into the storage settings for that app, I can actually see a section there that now appears that says storage used. And I can change that from internal storage to SD card storage. Now that might do the trick, but this only ends up working on certain apps, i.e likely not going to find this feature or this function appearing on system apps, which take up a lot of space. And you may encounter oddities in the day-to-day -day use of those apps since, let's face it, this wasn't a feature that was explicitly enabled by the developer. So definitely use caution if you're trying this method. Now, if it's truly supported on the device, and I'm gonna use the Huawei MediaPad M5 Lite 10 tablet to show this, you'll see a, a much different approach. In this case, the adoptable storage function will actually format the SD card to be used as internal storage. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that here in a second, but uh, let's see how this plays out on the Huawei tablet. I go into settings, storage, and then default location. And this actually allows me to set this to SD card. And when I do that, it you know it tells me it needs to encrypt it, it needs to restart the tablet. This is all a method of encrypting that storage and integrating it into the storage of the entire device. Now, adoptable storage has some downsides though. 
Uh, like I said, it encrypts the card and the device that it's on is its key. So th this suddenly becomes a non-removable storage medium. I mean, you can remove it and you know everything's gonna be fine on your device and you put it back in and it'll see it and it'll, it'll kind of bring it back into the experience again, uh, but you couldn't remove it and then plug it into your PC to pull files off of. It just doesn't work like that because it's encrypted and the device is the key. Uh, it can also result in slower read times, uh, read and write speeds, um, though picking an application performance class SD card might help with that. And finally, and this is a really big one, developers have to actively enable support for this feature. They have to allow their apps to be installable or movable to an SD card. And if the developer doesn't do that, the app storage uh, can't be moved over to the SD card, so you're kind of out of luck. Now, I saw a hint of an upcoming support update that might be coming to the Stylo 5 to enable this, but the phone is now one year old, so take that for what you will in Android world, uh, that, you know, that might mean that it may never see that update. Who knows, cross your fingers. Therefore, uh, first of all, I'm sorry, I don't have an easy answer for you to activate that. It's just, from, from my uh, research, not possible. But I have some tips here that I thought I'd share real quick to show you what I do when I start running low on, on space on my device. Surely you have done this uh, yourself, uh, at least some of these, but maybe, maybe this will fill in the blanks and you'll learn a, new, a little something as far as what you can try as well. Real quick, I want to thank the sponsor of this episode. This episode of Hands on Android is brought to you by ExpressVPN. You need to have a VPN when you're working from home. And I can say with full confidence that ExpressVPN is the best VPN on the market. It doesn't log your data, internet speeds are always fast, and it's easy to use. So protect yourself with the VPN that I use and that I trust. Use my link at expressvpn.com slash HOA today, and you'll get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free on a one-year package. That's expressvpn.com slash HOA. Make sure and visit expressvpn.com slash HOA to learn more. So this is what I do when I'm running low on storage. First place that I check, first place I go immediately when I need storage fast is I jump into Google Photos. So you just launch the app. If you tap on your profile picture and you can see right there, you can be sure that your photos that are on the device have been backed up. If not, trigger that backup. Uh, in this case, they're all fully backed up and you can see that. And then um, when it says backup complete, when that shows there, then you know it's time to tap the free up button to free up that space. And that's going to go through in many cases. Usually when I do that, photos have collected over time and videos have collected over time. It's like 12 gigs of space. So it really depends on your device. Um, but I tap that, boom, suddenly everything's open and my emails will update. So you'll probably like that a little bit. But you did say that you're, you uh, cleared out some photos and videos. So Another place to jump into is storage settings. There are storage space tools inside of system settings on, on, on Android devices. And I'm showing on the Pixel series here, if I go to settings and storage, this actually gives me a view into what kinds of files are taking up all of my space. And this actually allows me to tap into a category so I can see further detail within that category. So for example, I can tap into music and audio, and that's going to show data used by many of the audio apps on my device. And I can determine, like, do I even use that audio app? Do I care that there's cached music on there? I can even tap an app from there to go into its settings view and clear the cache. And that might save me hundreds of megs, if not gigs of uh, space. Now, a note about clearing storage, because that's another option here. Uh, you can definitely get space savings by doing this, but you want to be very careful. You may be actually deleting valuable personal data associated with that app if it isn't backed up somewhere. Usually, when you do this, when you clear the storage, it's also going to require you to re-log into the app once you're done. It's almost like you've wiped out your authentication, and next time you launch it, it's as if you uh, just installed it from the Play Store. 
But the bonus there, and I find this in music uh, apps all the time, is that like all these playlists have have kind of built up the the storage space on my device, and I might get some of that space savings uh, out of clearing the cache, but I'm going to get even more out of clearing storage, and I'm just okay to start over fresh. It's really not that complicated to just tap to go back in, but depends on the app. Be very careful. You don't want to get rid of something and then regret it later. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is something called smart storage. So we're going to actually, in settings on my Pixel, go back to the main storage page. And here you can see ta uh, the smart storage button. Just tap on that. Now, this feature automatically frees up storage space by removing backed up photos and videos from the device. So it knows that they're backed up. It knows that they're photos and videos, and it does it automatically. And if you tap the drop down menu, you can select from 30, 60 and 90 days old for the media that's to be removed. Very nice automatic way to be sure that things don't run out on you. So if you set this up and your space gets low, then your phone will automatically look and go, oh, we can safely remove these things. They're backed up in the cloud. And then you never really, hopefully anyways, in a perfect world, you never really have to think about it. Your device is just always kind of freed up for everything that you need. Um, now, again, uh, there is an expanded version of smart storage that's very easy to miss. You might not even know that it's there. Let's go back to the main storage page. And here I'm gonna tap free up space, that free up space button that I tapped before. Now you can see I get a menu here, choose to complete action using smart storage. I have another uh, another app on here that I could jump into. I'm going to talk about that in a second. But this is how you get into some expanded uh, settings around smart storage. So I'm going to go into smart storage from here. And up top, you know, we have the backed up photos and videos option, which we kind of already did in the other uh, in the other screen. But below that, we have the downloads folder. And then we have infrequently used apps. Now, each app listed shows the last time that it was launched and how much data is tied up inside of those apps. This is actually, when you, when you select the number of apps, this is actually a bulk app uninstaller. It makes it really easy. You just select all the apps that you don't want in your device anymore and then process that and they'll uninstall easily. And when they do that, it frees up all of that space. So, you know, maybe you do have some apps on there that you don't use very often or that you don't mind just installing for that one time every five months that you do need it. You know, um, I'm a little bit of an app hoarder. So sometimes it's important for me to remember they don't need to live on my device all the time. I can just install it that one time I need it and then uh, boot it out. So you're going to see how much space uh, you save in the process when you use this function. Now, finally, I want to talk about an app that Google released a couple of years ago. Initially, they released, uh, I think it was called Files Go, but now it's called Files by Google. Uh, initially, they released this uh, to tackle file storage issues in developing countries on devices that had very low storage because those devices tend to be a lot less expensive, so lower spec and that sort of stuff. Um, but it's a really expansive file cleanup tool. Uh, it's designed to squeeze every last bit of storage out of your device. Uh, there's one tap removal of junk files, duplicate files, old lingering screenshots that you have trickled about. Uh, yes, of course, backed up photos and videos. Uh, you can remove any app that you don't use, similar to what we should just showed off, uh, downloaded files, and even large files. If you just want to isolate all of the very large files to get the most bang for your buck, you can jump in there and you know make sure that you feel comfortable removing these things, select them, remove, and boom, you've got all that space. Uh, the UI of all of this is very appealing. Uh, very easy to use. You don't get kind of lost in the in the the design of the app. Uh, plenty of confirmation as well. So and that's important because you don't want to accidentally delete something you didn't realize you you were deleting, uh, and then you need it later. So there's a lot of confirmation here. Like here here are the things. Are you sure you want to download this uh, so that you don't make a mistake. It does have a more straightforward uh, file browser if you want to manually look through things on the device, which also happens to break things out into categories, which makes it easier uh, to locate storage offenders in different categories. And there's even a peer-to-peer -peer file sharing feature. Um, I'm not going to get into that here because that's not really on topic, but definitely worth considering if you want to share a file uh, with a friend. So those are a few tips and tricks, at least things that I do 
when I start running low on my device. First thing first, though, I go into that Photos app and I remove backed up photos, and that almost always works for me, and I never have to do the rest unless things are really dire. So, Anthony, I really hope that helps, and I'm also crossing both of my fingers <laughs> uh, to, that LG is going to update the Stylo 5 and bring you that feature like it's possible that they might. They've had it on previous versions of the Stylo, by the way. For whatever reason, they don't have it on the Stylo 5. Maybe it's worth complaining to LG about and uh, see what they have to say. All right. If you've got a question or maybe you've got a, a tip that you want to share or a trick, something that you want me to focus on in the episode, please send me an email and I will definitely read them and maybe I'll bring them on the show just like Anthony's email today. HOA at twit.tv. You can send the emails there. Also, subscribe to this show. It's so important. Go to twit.tv slash HOA. That is the show page on the web. You can find all the ways to subscribe in audio and video formats. All of the podcatchers are listed there. Well, most of them anyways. And you can even jump out to YouTube and subscribe, like do your whole YouTube thing over there. We hope that you do. I'm Jason Howell. Thanks again for watching. And thanks to John Ashley for editing uh, this show each and every week. He always does a fantastic job. And uh, We'll see you next week on another episode of Hands on Android. Bye, everybody. Hey, folks, it's Micah Sargent here, co-host of Smart Tech Today right here on Twit.tv. Every single week, Matthew Casanelli and I sit down to talk about smart tech for the week. That's right. It can get kind of complicated, but there's a lot of news out there. There's a lot of products to dig through. There are a lot of questions to answer, and we try to do that all every single week. From voice assistants to wearables to smart garage door openers and lights, there's so much to cover and, well, so little time. So be sure to check it out. It's twit.tv slash STT. Huh, that rhymes. 